Welcome everyone to Our Lady's Driver's uh, Our Lady's Toolbox. We're very happy to have all of you here again. Uh, most of you for the second time. We, for those of us who are new, um, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, we are three organizers. Um, I'm Divya, and you can see Kyla and Elisa wave. And you can write to um, any of us right now as well if you want to reach out to us individually for any reason or follow us on Twitter. And you can find all our meetups, um, current, forthcoming, all on Meetup. A little bit about the series that we're running right now. Um, we're right now doing the Our Ladies Toolbox series, which is um, what we will be presenting today. Um, these are five workshops on analysis. We had that in January, presenting results, which is what we have right now in Feb today. Uh, reproducibility, which will be in March. Version control in April. And in May, we're going to have an amazing panel discussion on um, women in science. Um, this series is funded by the University of Education in Freiburg or the Pedagogische Hochschule. Um, simultaneously, these Our Ladies Toolbox series is a bit advanced, but simultaneously, we are also running um, Zero to Shiro, um, which you can also follow on Twitter with the hashtag from Zero to Shiro and the Our Ladies Toolbox series with hash Our Ladies Toolbox. Um, the Zero to Shiro series is aimed at um, a more basic learning um, to sharpen your skills, to practice your tidy work skills. Um, this series is run by Kyla and Yulia Wave, again. <laughs> um, they started in Jan with Introduction to Chidey Verse, and they're going to continue again with their five workshops till May. Um, and you can practice all your Tidy Verse skills or learn or um, just learn the bits that you were struggling with. Um, they'll cover everything. Um, our Our Ladies Toolbox series, of course, collaborations with Our Ladies around the world. Um, today we have Mansi presenting, and in the upcoming uh, months we have Charles Gray from Our Ladies Remote. April we have Kristen from the Global Team and Our Ladies Berlin. And finally, the um, panel discussion in May is going to be with Our Ladies from again all around the world, uh, Northern and Southern Hemisphere. Um, and the Tidy Verse series, the Zero to Shiro series, will um, tackle tidy data in two weeks. Two weeks, right? Yes. Um, in March, they'll move on to wrangling, April visualization, and then you'll get to practice all of it all again in May uh, to be completely sure you've learned everything. And you can find all our events still uh, mid May on our meetup page. So, without much ado, I give over uh, the floor to Mansi. <laughs> um, she's from Our Ladies Mumbai. Um, she does a whole lot of analysis for Nelson. Nelson. Um, you can also follow her on Twitter. Her LinkedIn profile is in our meetup description if you want to get in touch with her on LinkedIn. And we are very excited today because she's going to present the GD package in Markdown. So it's really going to be presentation focused. You'll have Markdown, you'll have tables, you'll have plots, but mainly the GD package, which is kind of new. We aren't familiar with it ourselves. So we're really excited and looking forward to that. Um, and with that, over to you, Mansi. And um, just a few quick pointers before we start. Uh, we already said this in the first um, toolbox meetup. Anyone who wants to get a certificate for attending all five meetups, feel free to put your name in the chat. You would have already done this in the first meetup. Um, just to confirm that you've also attended the second meetup, we would like you to put your names in the chat again now or throughout the session, doesn't matter. Um, just to confirm that you've attended. And yeah, uh, the sessions are being recorded. So if you want to remove any part of it or um, edit your face out or anything, you can let us know. Um, and we will also keep an eye out on the chat. So if you want to post questions in the chat and not interrupt Mansi, you can do that. We will have an eye out. We will let you, uh, we will like organize the questions accordingly. Um, we will also share her markdown file, her R script, um, and other material that she would be using throughout the workshop as and when needed, like right now. And um, yeah, as and when needed, we can reach out to any of us. 
Thank you, Divya. It's, it's, hi, everyone. It's always it's always nice being here. I've attended a couple of workshops, and it's always such a warm atmosphere, which is why I love coming back, even though it's really late out here in Bombay. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to do this. Um, I've left each workshop with something to ponder on, with something to remember. Uh, I hope I hope that after this workshop, um, you will feel the same. Uh, I came here, uh, I, I probably did my first study Tuesday here uh, at Our Ladies Freiburg and, and, um, and weirdly while I was doing study Tuesday I stumbled upon this very new package which was GT because I remember right after this workshop so it's like a long connection which, which, uh, which has led me here. Um, a little bit about uh, a little bit about what we're doing here today. Um, so, so we're trying to we're aiming to make um, make results more pretty more um, presentable in R. So we already have the ggplot package, which is of course very famous, one of the best visualization packages out there. I've spoken a lot of Python users. I've got into an argument with a lot of Python users, and I've always sort of got away with how great ggplot is. Um, uh, the GT package does something similar for tables. Um, so for a while we've had, uh, there, there have been a couple of packages for table creation in R, uh, but there's never been uh, something as simple, something which follows the tidyverse styling guidelines, something that just comes very naturally to our users. So um, if I think if I remember the date correctly, 9th April, 2020 uh, was when this package first dropped. Uh, Richard Ian um, and Joe Cheng. Joe Cheng, of course, um, I mean, we know him by uh, by the main developer. He is the CTO at R Studio and also the main developer for um, R Shiny. Uh, of course, a very, 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 um, very reputed and lovely developer. So this package comes with a lot of uh, heavyweight in, uh, and and yeah, it's it's done wonders. So I'm just going to start. Uh, I'll get right in. Uh, just before we start with the actual presentation, I've put a link uh, to the HackMD uh, file um, in the chat. Um, this is just to maybe just enter your names, put your Twitter handle, and uh, I think this could be a good um, good repository to just put in your comments, uh, put in your link. Uh, so this is going to be a hands-on workshop uh, when we make this together. Um, whenever you're done, if you want to share it with the, with the larger group, you can just link your image or link your output, um, put in whatever you're feeling um, on the HackMD file. It has a template currently. Uh, it says it won't let me open it. Um, let me just check. You may have to sign in with a GitHub account or um, I think it also lets you sign in with Gmail, Facebook, you know, the standard sign in options. Uh, are we going to um, upload the, the package, this GT package, or not? Sorry? I'm going to open we'll the package. We'll it in a minute. Um, we'll, we'll share her script and um, the markdown in a minute. For now, um, I think Mansi is still um, working with the HackMD, just to get uh, started. Yeah, I mean, for now, I have I'm just waiting. Sorry. I'm just waiting on uh, on folks to have it opened and fill in some results. I'll probably give it a minute or two and then we can move on. Okay, um, I'll just give it 30 more seconds. Let's 
asking in the chat everyone um, or a lot of people could get it to work finally are there still people who couldn't um, open or sign in for any reason But were we supposed to write in our Twitter handles or? If you're comfortable. Yeah, but I don't see where that was because when I opened the, the hack and the, then I got just uh, like an introduction to your presentation. So the first heading is Our Lady's Toolbox presenting results with you, right? Yeah. I wanna say, but then uh, I don't see where you write in. Um, so if you, could you see name and template? Yeah, right yeah. Yeah, so just copy and paste it below with your name. Um, enter where you see name instead of templates, just put in your name instead of Twitter handle, just put in your Twitter handle. In, um, okay. Yeah, perfect. Oh, I see where now. Maybe, maybe um, I see. Shall we get started? Sure. Awesome. Uh, okay. So I have made a markdown file for you for me to present to you today. Um, before uh, before we start, I'm just going to spend a minute on uh, on showing you how I created this in R. Um, so I think Eliza and Divya have done a wonderful workshop on R markdown. If they could just link it, um, we'll actually take you through the entire process and how it's it's very simple. But how uh, how we go about creating a markdown file um, in R. Uh, I won't take you. I'm just going to. I'm just going to scroll down and show you how my file looks like. And, and then I'm just going to show you what the result of this file looks like, which is this wonderful looking markdown file. Uh, how we're creating, how we go about creating how uh, the markdown file, I think that the, the, uh, the video should be really helpful. I'm sure it's up on YouTube. Um, you could just refer to that and it'll be really helpful. I'll get to what we're here for today, uh, which is the GD package. Um, so, uh, so I'll just spend some time on why we're on the motivation of creating the GD package. So, like I said, uh, there were uh, packages to create tables before. So, GD stands for Grammar of Tables, if uh, if I didn't mention that before. And uh, why uh, why the GD package is so there were a lot of uh, table creating packages in R, but none of them were so painless none of them were so um were just so easy none of them seemed um none of them seemed very natural for tidyverse users who are very used to the margarita pipe who just have uh who just have a way of um they just write in um uh, in tidy in tidy style syntax uh, which is why the gt package kind of seems very familiar for uh, seasoned tidyverse users um this is how a typical GT table looks like. It has a title, it has a subtitle. You could uh, you could put columns and you could group columns uh, together. Uh, this is called the spanner column label. You could add a custom row, a uh, stub head label. You could add a row label, and these are just your um, Sorry, can I interrupt? I don't think we can see the table. So we can just see your R Studio. Uh, we can't see the table. And could you also potentially make the text a little bit bigger on your R Studio console? Because uh, on my screen, it's pretty small. Yeah, it, ah, that's is, better. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought I was presenting. No problem. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this is this is what the GD table looks like. It has a title, has a subtitle. You could group columns together um, in a span a column label, or you could keep them individually. It's it really gives you flexibility to uh, to perform those sort of operations. It also lets you have footnotes and source notes. Uh, one thing that the GD that the that the creators of the GT package were very clear and they and they've written it in multiple blog posts is that they want this to be camera ready, they which is why they've included every intricate detail that could possibly uh, that they at that point could imagine that could possibly go on in uh, in a table. So you have everything right from uh, including uh, including highlighting random cells to including. Um, footnotes or source notes, etc. Uh, this is currently there are these are uh, the NITAR, the cable extra the format table. These are some of the packages that are currently also available in R. You could of course use them 
uh, if those are your needs. Today, uh, so there are there are about six um, six data sets included in the GD package. Um, today we'll be exploring the GD cars package. Uh, this is very similar to the empty cars package, which was, uh, which is there in BSR, which a lot of us have sort of uh, grown up, I um, mean, grown into our using the iris and the empty cars package. So the GD cars package is very similar. Uh, this is just a glimpse of what the data looks like right now. So you don't have to read it separately. You can just, as soon as you load the GD, uh, the GD package, you directly, um, you directly get access to the GD cars package. This is roughly uh, just a glimpse of what the data looks like. So you have a, the, the reason why it's here is that you have a good blend of characters as well as um, doubles here. Uh, which is great. So you have a lot of, um, there, there's a lot of exploration that you can do uh, with such versatile data. Um, what I'm doing is that I'm just performing some basic, now once I have my data, I'm just performing some basic uh, summarizing. I'm just grouping by some um, some manufacturers here. You could, you could of course select it as, as you want to show your table. Uh, I've just done, done a basic select group and summarize just some basic data wrangling and cleaning on my GT cars uh, package, right? Um, the next thing you see is my clean data is my DF. Uh, as soon as I apply, uh, I, as soon as I apply the GT operator, which is just one line of syntax where I've just uh, where I've just mentioned what my what my group name should be of the manufacturer. So here I've picked manufacturer, which is which is the Mercedes, Maserati, BMW, uh, the Aston Martin, which is why they are row labels here. So you just have to mention uh, what your group name of your column should be, and that will show up, right? It's that simple. It's just one. It's just sort of one line of syntax, and you have a base uh, table right here and right there. Uh, so this is the raw skeleton of um, of of the most basic um, uh, display table that you could make. Now uh, we move on. We of course like we format. I mean, our next obvious step would be to maybe add titles, add subtitles, uh, highlight certain cells, um, put commas here, make things in capital, group, um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, which is why we from now on. Uh, every iteration that we do will will uh, will be with respect to each one of them, right? Um, so um, just to start off, uh, one thing I thought just to make it pretty, I thought let me add the country flag, which the manufacturer, uh, whether what is the manufacturer's home um, country flag, right? So if you could see, I've I've just I've created a new data frame here, which just which just contains the um, manufacturer and its corresponding um, country. So the BMW Germany, you see Maserati, which is Italy, right? I've just created a separate data frame and then joined it to my, sorry, is someone saying something? Oh, okay. Uh, I have just joined it and I have directly, I, so this is my data frame where I've just created a data frame, which is, which is a manufacturer and its corresponding country flag code. Uh, I have just joined that to my original um, GD cars package and then just created, uh, and then just redid my GT, recalled my GT code, right? Which is the original code that we worked with. And as you can see, uh, we can see the flags are here, right? So uh, again, very simple. We just created a new data frame with the flags, with the manufacturer, joined it here, and it automatically um, showed up. So this is this is great. You can add any picture. Um, it's 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 really easy uh, to do so. Next, we do is that we uh, we see the column names are a little scattered here. We want to group them together. We want to make it make the column names more readable. Uh, we want to make it more presentable. Uh, so we move on to doing that. Uh, what we do is that we um, we group some uh, column names. So these column names that you could see, these are all are related to the performance of the car. So what we do is that we group it all under the performance subheader. So we call this label, we call we call this a tab a tab spanner, and we name it performance. And these are the columns that we include in performance. As a result of this, you could directly see that a performance bar shows up uh, in front of these columns. So that is this is a direct result of this code, right? You're just grouping, 
you're just grouping uh, various metrics together and labeling uh, them performance. The next thing you do is that you want to merge um, some columns together. You, you know, realize that this is too scattered. Some of them can be under one, uh, under one column name, uh, which is why we move on to the merge columns operator, where we merge these two columns. Um, and if you want, you can hide a column. I mean, you can only give it this name, but it's merged. So as you can see, the HP um, we had earlier, we had uh, HP and HP RPM. Now we only have HP, one below the other. It's a lot more readable. Same thing with Torque, same thing with the MSRP. Um, sorry, not same thing with the MSRP, just the, uh, just the MPG, HP, and Torque. We've let the MSRP be for now on. Um, just some basic things. We're just getting things together, um, just making this more readable. The next thing we do is that we need, we change our column labels here. Uh, so instead of MP, MPG underscore C, we make it MPG. It's a lot more legible. HP gets into capital, TRQ gets into torque, um, just things like that. We, it's, it's similar to the rename function that we have in R, where we just specify the old name and the new name of our data frame, very similar. Um, it's, it's, it's just a simple operation to change column names. Uh, the next thing we notice is that, um, is that these are just, especially MSRP, which is, which is the cost. It's just, it's just the line number there. We don't have any unit to it. We don't have any metric to it, uh, which, is why, which is why we now move on to format the unit. So you could, um, the, the GD package gives you flexibility. You could make this, in, you could include as many decimals as you want to. You could include liters, you could include meters uh, right now. And you could of course include the currency of your choice. Um, here in, in specific, I'm calling um, this to be US dollars. So it's again, very similar, uh, very simple. I use my earlier uh, created GT and I just use the format currency function here. Um, the format currency function, you can just specify uh, as, many, um, as many columns as you want to. And uh, as you can see, you mentioned the currency type and a dollar sign has just showed up. So you could of course mention um, the unit of currency that you like um, and, and it'll just uh, display it right there. So again, very user-friendly. Um, so like I said, format currency is just one of the things that you could format. You could include this in various units. You could um, do it when you're trying to measure height or weight. You could include um, all of that. All of that's available um, in, in the package. Mansi, we have a question already. Um, sure. Is there a limit to the data we can use? So if someone has 10 million lines and they want to run that, that should be fine? Um, that should be fine, but uh, but uh, I mean to make it more presentable, to make it more concise, you might want to look to um, to group and summarize a few things together. Uh, but uh, but if you want to include all of them, that should be fine. Um, so yeah, um, we we've just formatted our currency here. We've just got a dollar sign, which looks which looks a lot more neater uh, right here. Uh, just easy, quick changes really bring about some nice, uh, nice look to the table. Um, column alignment. Next thing is that, of course, we want to center align, uh, and we want to just include. Um, we want to include the size. We want to decrease the size of our text. For example, let's say um, I made this only size twelve. Uh, these were looking very big. Um, you want some cells to be big. You want some cells to be small. Just basic formatting check. X, uh, formatting changes that you want to do uh, to make it less cluttered, to make it less, uh, to make it more presentable, right? Um, so that's the thing, like you could, the GD package gives you such flexibility that you could, uh, you know, format every part of every cell, uh, which is why it makes it, uh, which is why it's become such a favorite. Uh, so here I'm just uh, decreasing the size of, um, of these four columns uh, and I'm center aligning uh, my data. That's it, right? This is what the next code is doing. Uh, next thing I'm doing is that uh, I'm doing some text transformation. So as you can see here, 7A, 7AM is not very legible. Uh, you want something that really, you want to make a table that really uh, answers more questions than it asks, uh, which is perhaps why uh, you want to make this a lot more um, readable. Uh, so what I've done here is that I have, um, 
I have just created a condition. So AM stands for automatic manual, M manual, uh, etc. I have just um, edited this using my basic dplyr's case when, and I have uh, made that change in my table. So as you can see, uh, instead of A, instead of AM, um, you can automatically see the difference here. Uh, again, a lot, uh, again, I mean, it's, it's, it, this looks a lot more better than just having A and AM. Um, for a reader, for, uh, to make it more universally presentable, uh, you want to sort of um, explain as, as well as you can, right? The next is everybody's favorite, uh, adding a title and a subtitle. Uh, again, uh, very similar to how we do it back in ggplot. You just um, you just create a new function, and then you can just add a, type, a title and a subtitle here, um, and that's uh, and that's it. You can uh, similar to Markdown. If you put it under two stars, um, you could see it get bold, uh, which is uh, which is what's done here. Um, next is you're adding custom color scales. Um, so color, of course. Uh, Brings a brings a whole lot of uh, visual appeal, aesthetic appeal, but that's not it. Uh, you also want to conditionally format. You want to sort of um, you know have it in descending order, in ascending order. You want to be. Uh, it's it's just another aesthetic, uh, as we call it in ggplot, uh, which is in, uh, which is which you can include in gd. So here I've done it. Um, I mean, of course, you can see it's pretty obvious the higher values have a brighter color. Um, again, the code is very simple. Um, I've just used the amber material. You can go on and choose your palette uh, as you like it. There are there are some lovely, beautiful palettes available in the package. Uh, you could definitely check this out um, and, and include it as per your liking. Uh, next one is Once adding the one there are more questions. Uh, um, First question is, sometimes the data has blank spaces at the beginning or end. Can the data be trimmed at the same time the values are being changed? Um, uh, so when you're so when you're creating um, your base um, input data, uh, I think I think a good practice, I mean, if I understand your question right, could be to just get rid of null values or blank spaces right there. Uh, if if you already put it in a table, uh, you could conditionally sort of, um, you could conditionally format it if you want. You could just put a black or you could just put a gray. Uh, GD gives you that uh, that flexibility to just uh, to just work on one cell if you want to. So you could put a condition there that wherever there is another value to just uh, uh, to just color it. Uh, um. Just clarified blank spaces as prefix suffix before or after the value when the data is exported from data warehouse. Um, so I think uh, I'm not too sure, but I think you could just use the trim function in R, which which automatically um, gets rid of front and black spaces and and then have it um, inputted in the GD package. And another question. Um, how can you compare the GT table with the GT package with um, cable extra package um, if you're um, familiar with it? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I've, I've tried to do work with the cable extra package, uh, not uh, not too much though. So, but uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, one of the main uh, one of the main plus points and really attractions of the GT package is that it follows the tidyverse um, syntax. Uh, the pipe, if you see that, you see the pipe everywhere, uh, which 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 tidyverse users who are, uh, I mean, most of our users now have are familiar with the tidyverse users with with the tidyverse package. So it's a lot more familiar. It gives you a lot more flexibility. Uh, for me, I personally found it uh, very easy to move to the GT package, and I wasn't constantly. Uh, looking or getting stuck with syntax uh, because I was more familiar with um, with the tidyverse styling. Uh, yeah. um, Divya, is there are there more questions? Should I? No, you can go on. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Great. Oh, wait, um, there's another question. Sure, sure. Um, 
well, the follow-up to um, Cable Extra was that Cable Extra uses Pipe as well. Oh, really? Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure, but I. I mean, this is uh, from what I understand and from what I've read all about the GD package is that it's it's like one of the tidy. Uh, it's one. Of, it's one of the tidyverse uh, uh, fellows, uh, for lack of better word. Uh, which is why. Uh, which is why it's. I mean, I think Hadley Wickham when it came out, he also sort of mentioned how uh, when he created the about how it's when he created the gt plot package this is how he envisioned it and now it, the gt package has a very similar uh, vision so yeah that's yeah. but for anyone interested in the cable extra um there is a G github link there now in the chat um and you can definitely yeah. look at it awesome and another question is uh, will the gt table knit to word uh no it doesn't i actually just tried it it doesn't so you just it's just text 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 text. You could knit it to a PDF for uh, of course in HTML. But maybe in upcoming updates they change that. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. hope. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, moving on. Um, so one thing is that again, um, you could add a custom border here uh, to to the table like I've done here. Um, the syntax again, you just sort of specify the weight of the of the border that you want, and you specify the column uh, beside which you want it, right? So here I've just mentioned the MSRP column, and here my, here my border shows up. It's just thick, nice black border. Uh, one thing why I put it there is to differentiate performance from from the pricing. It looked like it looked like um, it just looked like it was a part of the whole. Uh, to really call out the difference, um, you could do that. Uh, I've just sort of put this here. Um, next thing you can do is to add um, to add a source note and a footnote. Um, so you could, um, of course, like similar to how you call a title and how you call a subtitle, you could just add the source note. You could just add the footnote, and here it shows. So things like you want to call out units, you want to call out, you want to give credits to who where your data is coming from, you could just um, you could just do this right here. Next is I've just put a whole bunch of uh, bunch of table options that you could do. You could um, you could you know specify your heading color, your row color, your anything. You could specify these lines in the middle. You can specify the exact hex codes of this. Uh, the actual I mean I I would suggest that when you're actually doing your final formatting, you go to the tab options um, uh, link in in the R Studio. When you I mean just you could just look for help there. It'll directly lead you, and there are about hundred um, options that it, that they give you flexibility about. I just picked a few um, things like you know if you just want to adjust the font, if your source note, if your footnote, um, basic things. Uh, you could include all of that here. It's like it's like the theme in um, in ggplot. Next thing, um, so this is kind of the uh, the GD mo most of the main that you know you'd probably want to do uh, offhand um, in the GD package. Uh, next thing, uh, like I keep mentioning, it's very um, a lot of people who use GD now are from the tidyverse. Um, our Tidyverse users have also included uh, just one way in which we could uh, integrate uh, plots into our GD table. Um, so one one good thing is that it uh, GD allows uh, ggplot intervention. Uh, this is of course, I mean, uh, in only cases where you absolutely need a plot, a lot of tables don't. Uh, I've just included a very basic example where you could just plot uh, make make a plot for um, each model. Just just see where it stacks uh, for horsepower and uh, of torque. Uh, just a very basic um, plot that I've put in. The syntax, of course, is 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 um, is. So this is the GG plot that I'm creating, and then I'm just calling it using the text underscore transform uh, function um, within uh, within GT. Which so I've created my uh, my plot here and I'm just mapping it to each row. Um, so this kind of allows you to, um, I mean, you could include a whole range of like bar plots or whatever, 
um, you could uh, you could also include spark lines here. Uh, again, looks great on tables in case you have the need. Uh, I've just included a very basic example that you could um, that you could need. Um, the next thing, um, so this is basically the introduction to GT. I've I've covered uh, some offhand uh, what you would uh, what you would need to do to make a basic uh, GT plot. Um, uses, of course, you could. Um, I mean, in the tidy in tidy Tuesdays, of course. Now there have been more and more people who are using the GT plot, uh, the GT package to um, to um, make tidy Tuesdays, um, which is which is so refreshing to see. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's the, you're gonna probably if you just go on the hashtag, which is the GTR stats stash, uh, hashtag on Twitter, you'd see a whole uh, bunch of Tidy Tuesdays uh, showing up. Um, these are some great, great, great resources that are up. Um, I'll just I'm sorry just before one. you move on to your resources. Um, can you walk through your code uh, where you put the plots in? Where I put the plots in? Yeah. Just sure. go through the code. Sure, uh, sure, could, sure. Would I, could I please request all participants to um, mute themselves? Thank you. Sure. So, um, so I've just made a GG, uh, GG plot um, where I've just plotted horsepower and torque, and I've sized by the the uh, the price, uh, which is, uh, and of course, I made a scatter plot. I've called this. Uh, I've I've colored it blue and I've called for the theme economist. I didn't want to include a whole uh, a whole long list of uh, full fledged. Um, I mean, this is this is a very ggplot, a very basic uh, scatter plot that I've made, uh, and I've made this for each. Uh, I've grouped it for each manufacturer and made it for uh, which is why you see a different uh, one for each, right? I've saved this as an object and then I'm calling the same object. Um, in um, and I'm mapping the same object to each uh, to each model here, right? So as you can see, this I've specified the um, the column in which I want my plot. So I've just put it here in my MPG, and I've just shaded the column width. So this is something that I worked on really iteratively. Uh, what happened is what happens is that if you directly include the width or if you if you don't mention the column width or the height. Um, GT doesn't um, just take um, that just doesn't uh, take a plot that just doesn't make it readable. It my plot was probably like two fingers wide. Um, that was uh, which is which is why you kind of want to get the aspect ratio right. Um, which is why you kind of have to play around with the whole um, how how I mean here. So which is. I've I've mentioned 250 for only this column, but I've mentioned the rest. To be 80, right? So you really have to just play around with, um, with the size and dimensions of um, of the column to make your plot more uh, visible. Otherwise, it just has a tendency to just not show at all or be really squished. And yeah. Um, is the map function looping to create the plots? Yes. Um, can we, should I move on or are there any? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so, I mean, I'm really, uh, this is this is some really exciting uh, plots that, uh, that, uh, that have been made with GT. Um, so great, um, I mean, similar color schemes you could pick from here, some great resources, um, conditional formatting. I don't want to spend, I mean, of course I've linked this. Uh, I just wanted to sort of show you the final plot um, that was made uh, with, uh, this is of course by, uh, uh, by I think Tom, the mock-up blog. I think it's one of the employees, um, Thomas Mock, he's one of the employees at our studio itself. Uh, it's a wonderful blog on, really takes you step-by-step step, um, with, uh, with like each, um, each formatting, each color uh, really like takes you step by step uh, with the entire process. This is a great, um, great resource that you could really um, look at. Um, you could, you could see, you could see what I'm presenting, right? Or is it still my markdown? No, we can see your uh, yeah, the markdown, but the reference. Could you? 
we see the reference section, we don't see you actually um, opening. Oh, oops, 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 oops. Uh, I will just. Uh, better now. Can you see my um, Chrome browser now? Okay, awesome. Um, sorry, I thought this was showing. So yeah, uh, again, a great blog, uh, something that I really enjoyed reading. Uh, takes you really step by step on the entire process. I'm not going to spend time on uh, on each code, but this is the final uh, process. This blog is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's a wonderful looking table, uh, which you could really uh, arrive at. Um, another another um, great resource. Um, some This is some, again, written by same Thomas Mark. Uh, these are just some few guidelines that you could sort of refer to while creating um, the gplot. Um, so like I said, when I was mentioning that you could, you could go to each cell and specify the color of each cell, um, here's just an example of that. Um, so again, like if you just want one row and you just want a column on the top right to be red, uh, that's, you could do that, uh, which is, which is great. Um, so yeah, again, basic conditional formatting, all of that very, uh, self-explanatory code. Um, that you could find here. This is this is a blog I actually wrote when it first came out. Um, I wrote this, I think, 13th of September. It was about four or five months uh, after the package got released. Um, this is something that I uh, made for Tidy Tuesday. Um, again, I've tried to include a step-by-step -step tutorial for uh, each, um, for, uh, of course, doing each and every step. Uh, it's on my GitHub. Uh, it's also on the references. You, this is the final plot. Um, you could, uh, of course. I, we aren't seeing any plots. Oops. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just. Yeah. Now? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, this is, uh, like I was saying, this is, this is just. I've linked this also. This is a blog I wrote about for five months after the package came out. I, I did this plot for Tidy Tuesday. Uh, again, like I've tried to include a step-by-step -step, uh, right from the raw data. Uh, I've used the Palmer Penguins package. Uh, this is of course available in base R. So you don't need any external data source. You could just, you could just fire up your R studio and get started with this. Um, you could uh, of course um, reach out to me again. I mean, since I've written this, I could probably uh, help you. And of course I've linked also the reference manual for um, for uh, the GD package. This is a 166 page manual. It's really big, uh, but uh, your, the find operator is really your best friend here. Um, you, could, uh, you could, every time you're trying to, let's say, lay, change column names, you could just do a control F and sort of just, uh, it'll just navigate to that page. You don't have to go through the 166 long uh, page document. Uh, so those are some great resources. Um, and that's, uh, that's that these are like my top five favorite. I'm a little biased because I've included my one here, but these are some, uh, uh, some uh, resources that you could go to and you should get a pretty, pretty solid uh, grasp on the package. Uh, next steps, um, I'd love for you if you could all um, sort of get started and build some uh, basic um, uh, basic GD table. So, like I said in the start, um, there were there are six um, six inbuilt data sets in the GD package. Uh, we have explored the GD cars package, but there are five more. Uh, so, as soon as you load the GD uh, the GD package, you could just type, let's say, pizza place, and it'll show up. Uh, so, uh, I mean, just, just so that we all uh, are on the same page, just so that we all aren't like working on extremely different data sets, um, you could probably pick, uh, pick five, uh, any one of the rest five. Um, and I've just included so some base still at the package. We, you probably want to yeah, I'm just, I'm just sort of, uh, 
and I'm just going to just where you find okay. the large 166 page talk. I think it's in your references, right? It's yeah, yeah, it's in my reference. The last one. Yeah, it's it's the last one. Yeah, the reference manual. Um, yeah, just just the next steps. You could, like I said, we've done the GT cars. There are five more. You could just look over them, uh, just so that we're all on. Um, just so that we're all on similar pages. Uh, we're not working on very completely different data sets and we can all help each other out. Um, you could, I mean, it'd be nice if we could stick to these ones, uh, these data sets for now. Um, uh, these, I've just included some basic next steps. First is to create just a skeleton of the GD table. We'll just work iteratively. We'll create a skeleton and then we'll keep on adding, 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 adding. Uh, some basic things, uh, I mean, we could move to like just creating a basic GD table, adding title, subtitle, grouping some columns together, formatting, adding a footnote and color, color, color. Uh, I think that'll be a good, uh, good uh, primer to getting started with the GD package. Um, and yeah, that's that's about it. Um, I have, uh, uh, Divya, have you shared the markdown in my script with, with yes. the group? So the markdown, uh, the vTransfer file that we've shared a few times already has uh, Mansi's markdown as well as her script. Um, and there are questions now on where they can find your beautiful blog posts and where they can find all these links. Um, it's all there. If you just open her markdown and scroll down, that's what she's looking, that's what she's sharing right now. Oh, yeah. and thanks. There are people sharing your uh, blog post now as well. <laughs> Thank um, you. I also didn't want to interrupt you, but there were a few uh, points where people were commenting on how awesome it is and how nice it is and there were a few people clapping yeah. and saying oh this is so easy and this is so nice so I, I didn't want to interrupt you for all the compliments but there were a few uh thank <laughs> quite a few thank you it's always it's, it's, it's i love it when people get excited for a new package <laughs> uh so yeah uh so i think uh, i think it's over to you all now uh, i'm going to be here uh i think that maybe we could all get started with just picking one of them and following the next steps. The HackMD file is right there. Uh, any comments, any, I mean, this that has a template to a checklist. Uh, you could maybe just add uh, what you're working on right there. So I could maybe have keep having having a look. It could just give uh, the maybe larger group. There that aren't um, a lot of people who um, were there for Tidy Tuesdays. Should we just briefly walk them through how we used HackMD? Yeah, sure. Um, do you want to do that or should sure, I? I can, um, yeah. like if you just, just put the down, there are still um, 15 people online. Um, I could also just screen share. Um, so you can now see the HackMD here. Um, you can just enter whatever you want on this side and it shows up here. Um, what Mansi has done in the template is that she's marked, well, everything. Um, and Zara's done that as well. But for example, um, let's say Kyla is going to start working on a data set. She can be like, hmm, maybe I want to work on the same data set Mansi worked on. I want to take the cars um, and I want to add um, colors in increasing order of, I don't know. I don't know, their power or something, one of the variables. Um, and she writes that as her goal. You can write that here. So it just helps you clarify what you're doing. Um, and then you can be like, OK, am I done reading the data? I'm done. Am I done um, wrangling data into the appropriate format? Yes, I'm done. Um, am I done working with the code? So you can take Mansi's code and um, work on that and be like, oh, OK, yeah, I can take this part of her code. Now I can paste it here. And now I can change this part of her code. Um, creating a heading. You can also change these so you can like, uh, maybe Kyla wants to do something else and then she can just add another line here and say, um, I want to change the colors and then she can add that here and then take them along the way as she goes. So, and so like when I'm working on it, I can see Kyla's progress and be like, ah, she, that's what she's working on. Hmm, that's a nice idea. That's a nice goal. And then when I come down to mine, I can be like, oh, I want to do something similar. I want to do something different. Um, and then you can post your code here. Um, between these lines or you can of course and or post it to github and post your github link here um, so yeah that's how we've done tidy tuesdays in the past um, so everyone working parallelly on coding can keep 
an eye on each other, help each other out. If you post your code here, then Mansi can have a look at it as well. And if you have trouble with something, she can be like, oh, maybe this is what you're doing wrong. This is what you're doing right. Um, yeah. Any questions? And Mansi, again, um, you can just scroll down the comments because a lot of uh, really supportive compliments. <laughs> Everyone's really enjoying it. I wish I wish it was me, but it's really the package. <laughs> and yes, all of us are still here. So if you have any questions while you're working on um, whatever you're working on, you can ask any of us, uh, mainly Mansi, but yeah, we're all here. <laughs> A lot of people have also started um, working on HackMD. So every everyone who was curious about that or wondering how it works out, um, you can just hop on there and see how everyone's um, working parallelly. Um, Jigia, can I ask something? Is sure. uh, There were two links at the end, almost end of this, so like, uh, yeah. One is for the exploring the GT uh, package in R, and the other one I opened. This is in Medium. What is this? This Where is the, the in the reference uh, in the in the Markdown reference, right? In the reference yeah. section. So yeah, there's just I've just put a couple of links of blogs um, that are helpful um, for for people who want a refer. So just basic things. I think they're very well explained. Uh, there's just something you could refer to if you're ever stuck or if you ever want to get a little inspiration. Well, I'm not sure. Let me see again here. This uh, towards data science in the chat, actually. No, okay. in the chat. Yeah, there are two links. One is for package in R. I mean, both of them are like similar, but I don't know what, what is the yeah. different. Yeah, yeah so okay. So uh, because I yeah, signed up and I, I don't know what it is exactly. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the so the towards data science medium blog is is actually a blog that I wrote uh, with regard oh. to the package. Okay. You see it in the chat. Yeah. Good job. Okay. Thanks. Sorry, <laughs> mm -hmm. right, I'm just going to resume the recording. Um, and if we could do a small question answer session. Um, Hannah's question was how to change um, column names displayed in the table oh no uh, if they're still supposed to be sorry I'm just gonna yeah, leave so it. Me... <laughs> <laughs> even if we change the column names to be displayed in the table we are still referring to the column um, by the original names in the code right and you said yeah. yes yeah. so that's correct um, Kyla has a question on changing the font size for row labels mm -hmm. Um, tab style um, seems to change the other columns, but not row um, label columns. Uh, um, and Lisa has a question as well. This came on. Yes, so I'm doing like a very simple column with columns and rows, and I don't know how to add a name to the to the columns. Okay. So I for each column on my data set, I, I have a name. So that's the column of the data set. And then I have like, um, I don't know if it's easier if I share the screen, but I will. <laughs> so I would want to add here, like a name for this first column where I have this ABC, I would just to put here spray. And I didn't find how to do that. Like I, I saw your example, but there you have like a grouping variable and I don't have any. So I was wondering. right. So um so what you want is a row stub. Um you could I think um just um maybe you could just Google row stubs or you could just go through one of the blogs. I think I think the Tom uh the the mock-up blog has an example of how he's just sort of i think it's the first or second link you could just go through it um it's it's just there um okay great i will try thanks yeah yeah and i think uh, could, could Kyla's question... also, um, screen share and show that bit of code just you know if somebody's looking at this um at a later time point 
they know yeah. what they're referring to. Yeah, yeah, I could just do that. So yeah, um, so this this is the ad titles uh, section that I was referring to. Um, you could um, you could sort of um, include um, this player column label here player, which is I mean and just have um, just name um, name whatever unnamed column that you have um, with your column here right here. Thank you. Right. Um, Kaila, just um, your question. I'm just going to look at over the CAC MD5 and just have a look at your code. Yeah, I can show you my screen if you want. Um, sure. Okay, can you see that? So I'm making a little table about pizza and I've added this tab style and I've set the size to 12. Um, and I, I wanted it to be on all three. So I included like price size and this column was originally called name but um, it's only applying to like these size and price columns. And I thought maybe that's because this is the like row name column. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was I wondering think, if you could, how you change that. I, yeah, I, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just put the, uh, an example of, of changing rows maybe on the HackMD, if that would work. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'll leave my screen up for a minute and then I'll put it in there. So if anyone else has the same question, they can see. Sure. And maybe you can um, share your screen there as well so it gets recorded. Yeah, I'll just do that. And once you're done with that, we have another question. Is it on the chat? Yeah. So far we've seen um, single cells being colored according to their value. Is there a way to extend the coloring to the rest of the, I assume, cells? Um. So you mean like, um, so I think you mean like according to like a conditional formatting scale, like from high to low, um, is that what you mean? So that the whole row is colored. Uh, I'm sure you could do that. I could, I haven't tried it, but I'm sure you could do that. Maybe I could look it up. Yeah, I mean, you could, uh, but you could, uh, in fact, in the, I've done it in the medium post. Uh, if you could just look over it, where I've colored the entire, uh, I've collect, colored the entire row with the same um, color. Uh, I think I've put a, I've put an entire section, a, a subsection for that. Maybe you could look over that and let me know if that works. So we have around 15 minutes left. Do we want to maybe uh, come back and wrap it up somehow? Maybe a few people want to share their experiences. Uh, maybe you want to go over um, the main question groups, Mansi. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to, if anyone wants to share um, anything that they've made till now, I know, I mean, can't be a full-fledged uh, final presentation ready table, but if there's anything uh, that you've created and you want to share, I'd be happy to have a look. I'm sure the larger group would be happy to have a view too. Um, or else you could, of course, um, of course, uh, put it up on Twitter later. I could have a look then too. Oh, so I can show what I did. Yeah, sure if you want to see. So um, yeah, I started with this pizza place data set, which was included in the DT package, like you said. So mm. um, I started with that. And just in case for those who didn't work with that one, it looks like, let's see if I can pull it up. There's not. Um, It looks like this. So it's kind of a tidy data set and has like one row is one observation for the type of pizza and the price and the type of pizza, like some bigger categorization of the pizza. So when I started with that, I knew I had to make like a summary table to have any sort of a table that would make sense and not be on thousands of rows. 
So I grouped by the name of the pizza, that would be something like pepperoni, the size like small, medium, large, and the type, like whether or not that's a vegetarian pizza or meat pizza and so on. And then I just took like the average price. Then I did a little bit of renaming the text just to make it like prettier and not so um, data table looking, but more like a pretty, yeah, prettier. So then I came up with this data frame, which has like a nicely formatted name, size, type, and price. And then I took that and I um, made a GT from it and formatted the price column to be the correct kind of currency. I used tab style like uh, Muncie showed to change the font size and I added a header and then all I did so far was added color to show what size the pizza is. So my code is on um, um, HackMD if you want to see. I don't know. Yeah. And here's what the final table looks like. So I didn't get anything like super fancy done, but I got like just the type and the size and the price. And then the only thing I wasn't able to figure out, so I would like to make this text smaller, but I couldn't figure out how to make that smaller because it's a row name and not a column. And the other thing I would like to do would be like to maybe um, color both of these two columns, both size and price, the same color based on size. So those were the, like the two things that I was working on uh, right now before we ran out of time. But yeah, that's what I did. That's lovely. Thanks for sharing, Kyla. Uh, if there's anyone else, uh, I mean, I'd love to see uh, this final, uh, how it finally turns out. Please do put it up somewhere. Um, if there's anyone else who'd like to share, I'm here for the next five to seven minutes. Um, uh, we could do that. Uh, any closing remarks, if anyone else would like to share, please do that too. Uh, I think that this is, um, this. I think the, the bunch of resources that I've attached um, should be a fair step-by-step um, -step hand holding guide to the package. Um, it's still a fairly new package. Like I mentioned, it just came out in April in 2020. Um, not even a year old, uh, which is why it sees uh, it sees a lot of updates on a very regular basis. Um, you'd see a bunch of people raising issues in GitHub. You'd see a lot of um, you'd see a lot of new features being added, um, which is why I'd, I'd encourage you to stay um, to stay in touch with the happenings because there's always something new uh, every couple of months popping up. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's all I had. Um, yeah, uh, please do. Uh, I hope that you all do uh, finish this up um, and put somewhere, tag Our Ladies Freiburg and do stay in touch. Yeah. Okay, then thank you everyone for being here. Um, thanks, Mansi. <laughs> teaching us about this wonderful package at uh, past midnight now? Yeah, 12.30. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks for, um, yeah, thanks for everything. Thanks for your slides. Thanks for your notes. We'll put it all up on GitHub. Um, everything has been recorded and will be put on YouTube soon enough. Um, and we will now sh shut the meeting in a minute or two if um, no one has anything to add or any questions.